Hey, it's Mike here, and today, a study that I have been looking forward to, not knowing that it existed, ever since the Game Changers, the documentary looking at vegan athletic performance, and that is a study on muscle recovery, directly comparing vegans to meat eaters. They had them do a workout, and then they measured their delayed onset muscle soreness, and really just recovery in a few different ways, which is really cool. So we're gonna learn a bunch about the study, the methods that they use. We're gonna frame it in terms of previous research and look at what could be the mechanisms for the results, which I'm just gonna say might lead to us getting some sore losers in terms of the meat eaters. <laughs> so let's just go. For those of you who didn't tune into my last video, shame on you, I'm kidding. Uh, I am in Barcelona still for the whole month and I am trying to not talk quite as loud because there are neighbors, so if it sounds like my voice is like deeper or different, it's just because I'm not screaming, which apparently I normally do when recording videos. It's a complaint. The study is out of Canada, in particular the University of Quebec as well as McGill University, and it's in the International Journal of Sports Medicine, and it is online ahead of print from like a week ago, so this is hot off the press. This is so hot it hasn't even been pressed yet. I'm impressed. But in all seriousness, in case you're unaware, this means it's still peer reviewed, it's just out before the next journal release. And while randomized control trials are better in this case, they wanted people that were vegan for at least two years or meat eaters for at least two years, not too hard to find there. And they did 27 vegans versus 27 meat eaters. And so yeah, it's not a huge study, but it is enough as we will see to get some statistically significant answers. And they're really asking the question, do vegans happen to recover better? Do they have less soreness after a single sort of harder workout? A couple more details, this study was all women. And in particular, they were looking for people who were not trained. So just like normal people that aren't athletes. Athletes are still normal people some of them, and that single workout that they gave them and measured the response to was four different exercises, a leg press, a chest press, leg curls, and arm curls, each consisting of four sets of 10 reps. Quick ADD tangent right here, yes, four sets actually seems to be pretty smart. This review looked at a bunch of different studies and found that, yeah, up at the four mark, maybe the six mark even is good for training certain muscles, but then once you get past that, you're just wasting your time and even getting some slightly worse results. And the study was particularly looking at delayed onset muscle soreness. What is it? Well, from the American College of Sports Medicine, which probably needs to hook up with the American College of Graphic Design, <laughs> they say it's different from acute soreness, which is pain that is happening during the actual activity, but delayed soreness typically begins 12 to 24 hours after the exercise and may peak at 24 to 72 hours after. And everybody seems to be abbreviating it as DOMS. <laughs> but not that kind of dom, sorry to disappoint. Both involve pain. <laughs> and this is something that's relevant for long-term athletes, but probably even more relevant for those people just trying to get into exercise for the first time in a while. And as the study mentions, quote, in untrained individual, it could be argued that the experience of pain and discomfort from DOMS may lead to an unfavorable attitude toward exercise and in turn potentially affect exercise adherence and compliance to exercise protocols. And I have heard people say, I don't wanna work out because I might get sore, which I'm like, come on, you'll, you'll recover eventually. But it is also something for longer term athletes, as the study says, quote, the existing evidence suggests that DOMS could have a detrimental impact on exercise performance. So, you know, professional athletes, et cetera, who are training and perhaps training really hard to the point where they might get sore again, clearly want to have less of this. Now they measure results in various aspects, but I want to crank out one of the most interesting results to you guys quickly. So you can just stop watching the video and not support my channel through watch time. And that is the result that I think is the most rigorous in terms of measuring DOMS, that delayed onset muscle soreness. And that is pressure pain threshold, which this paper describes as something that is defined as the minimum force applied, which induces pain. This measure is proven to be commonly useful in evaluating tenderness symptoms. And in this case, they're essentially poking you with a device that measures the amount of pressure on the muscle that you worked out or that they're testing. And as they push harder and harder, eventually the person says, yeah, that's painful. And then you measure the exact amount. So it's you know, quantitative, it's more rigorous than just saying, you know, does that muscle hurt? So yeah, they literally poked people until it hurt. So I guess it would be a good job for a dom, a dominatrix as well. And the study does say that they use stiletto heels to induce the pain. <laughs> I'm joking. But for the results, looking to the pressure pain threshold of the meat eating group before they did the exercise and then 
after we can see that for several muscles there's a statistically significant increase in sensitivity or less pressure causing pain you know and that after was 48 hours after the workout when it is expected to peak but then looking to the vegans you can see that they got less tender less sensitive in the after than the before, so less sore to a statistically significant amount from several muscles, which is like, what? <laughs> and so it goes without saying that across several muscle groups, there's also a statistically significant difference between the vegan and the meat eater soreness, pressure, pain threshold. In other words, vegans had objectively less delayed onset muscle soreness, which implies better recovery. And these results immediately made me think of the people who I've met over the years who are vegan who say, hey, I could not exercise for various reasons. I hated exercise until I finally went vegan and then I either had the energy to exercise or I liked exercising more. And I'm wondering if this plays a role in it, people normally trying to exercise and then getting really sore or being a bit more sore and being turned off. There are of course other benefits like having a lower BMI and being able to move more easily. And then also, you know, perhaps just feeling better, having more blood flow, all of those things. And now we can take a quick little break with today's sponsor, Seeds DS01 Daily Symbiotic, which is a prebiotic and a probiotic, which is jam packed with 53.6 billion active bacterial cell units from 24 different strains which are, yes, scientifically shown to support various areas of health from gut barrier, gut immunity, and digestive health, as well as cardiovascular skin health and more. But today I just want to mention one of the other reasons that I think that this is a beneficial probiotic, symbiotic. That has to do with the way that they designed this cap to actually survive. It's called the via cap. And so if you pop this guy open, you have one capsule on the outside, but you actually have another capsule on the inside with that probiotic bacteria. The outside layer is designed to survive the stomach acid and pancreatic juices, as well as the audacity. And their simulated digestion test showed a virtually 100% survival. And that's why I personally believe it's more effective than other probiotics out there. And why say uh, Lindy, who has been taking it along with me since 2021, and why she's seen so many good benefits and why she's obsessed with it. You know, that's why it's out on the table and why Lindy is like trying to get her friends to take it, etc. <laughs> so of course, if you would like to try it, you can click the link below and use the code Mike25, that's M-I-C 25 for 25% off your first month supply. All right. But we have some other interesting results. They didn't just look at how tender people's muscles were. They also looked at how they would perform a couple days later. And the results are quite interesting. Before they did the exercises, the only statistical difference was that the vegans for whatever reason had significantly higher grip endurance by about 40%. Maybe it's from them holding onto their chair so tightly to endure Thanksgiving. There was no statistically significant difference in any of the other aspects, but, but then after we can see that the meat eaters had a decrease in strength in more categories than the vegans. Then in terms of comparing groups, the vegan grip endurance was statistically significantly longer by almost two times, which is wild. I can't help but think that if these study results were reversed, we would see headlines like study proves vegans are weak little lettuce munchers. <laughs> No, in the classic movie scenes where people are hanging off the ledge, um, the vegans would be lasting longer on the ledge. That's all I'm saying. That's very scientific. <laughs> they also had some wellness measurements, which were really just like qualitative in terms of how people felt. And there weren't really any differences here, but they are interesting because the initial level of anxiety was like trending 10% higher in the meat eaters than the vegans, not statistically significantly different. We can't judge anything from this, but it does match up with that other study looking at vegans showing they had lower anxiety than meat eaters. To be fair, both groups did have an increase in overall soreness. Not sure how that reconciles with those pressure results. And now we can look for the answer of why there might be a difference here. And there's several avenues we can look at. Well, the first thing we should do though, is go back to just how the groups compare. We can look at the baseline statistics and dietary intake and looking to the baseline statistics, there's really not that much of a difference. The vegans were a little bit older. However, the DEXA scans did show that the meat eaters were just a bit heavier. However, the lean mass, which includes muscle mass, was essentially identical. But yeah, the meat eaters were 1.5% higher in terms of body fat, but you know, these differences weren't even enough to be statistically significant. No, so were there any dietary intake differences? And I just love whenever there's a vegan versus meat eater study to just look at how people were eating differently. And we can see right off the bat that classic huge difference in fiber consumption here. 
you know, probably like 75% more fiber in the vegan group. And the saturated fat intake for the vegans was much lower, like 40% lower. Beta carotene consumption was like 75% higher in the vegan group. They were eating about twice as much of vitamin C, higher magnesium. And you can see that the vitamin B12 and D for quote dietary intake was significantly lower for the vegans, but I don't know if they included how much they were actually consuming in terms of supplements, et cetera, or, or fortified foods, which might not be obvious, but it is worth mentioning just for people who are concerned that several recent studies have shown that vegans have equivalent levels of vitamin B12 and in terms of vitamin D equivalent or even higher, it just depends. And again, that's due to likely a mix of fortified food intake as well as supplements of vegans being good about getting that B12 and D in. Also, just in case you're concerned in terms of the funding, you know, we have University of Quebec here, conflicts of interest are declared as none. And just to prove how Canadian people are so nice, they actually thanked the participants. You don't see that very often. So continuing on with the why of it all, there's clearly a dietary intake difference here. I mean, they're literally on different diets. We can measure it. And the scientists hypothesized with a few different angles. Firstly, they just talk about what this is, inflammation and how multiple lines of evidence, multiple studies have shown that vegans have lower levels of inflammation. You have trials like this one, putting people on a vegan diet, seeing their C-reactive protein and inflammation marker drop. But there could be a few processes happening happening here, but perhaps the most well studied is just that antioxidant intake. There are a bunch of different antioxidants that go different places and can do different things. We saw the higher beta carotene, we saw the higher vitamin C levels, of course, from eating plants. But as the researchers mentioned, we have several randomized control trials that look at you know, various antioxidant intake and delayed onset muscle soreness, as well as just muscle recovery and strength, etc. For example, we have trials on curcumin, the active ingredient in turmeric helping out here. As they say, two randomized placebo controlled studies showed that curcumin supplementation before and after strenuous exercise significantly improved DOMS markers such as pain in the lower limbs in physically active, healthy men. Quercetin, which is in various plant foods like greens, including kale, as well as capers, which is a great source, was looked at as well. And they say that after a single dose of quercetin, the torque velocity curve of knee extensors was enhanced and that the subject's total volume of resistance exercises was significantly greater compared to placebo. And do you like juice? Do you like cherries? Well, this randomized control trial gave people tart cherry juice, in particular soccer players, and they say that it attenuated the increase of pain in the lower limbs as well as improved recovery of muscle strength following prolonged intermittent sprint activity compared to controls, literally improved strength. And get this, retaining more of their jump height? What? And just zooming out here in case you had any doubts that plants have more antioxidants, we can look to this study on over 3,000 foods, which found that on average, plants have about 64 times more antioxidants than animal-based foods, so duh. So yeah, basing your diet around those high antioxidant plant foods means you're likely gonna have lower inflammation, lower oxidative stress, we're talking and perhaps real muscle recovery results after exercise, which this study is showing. I would like to see bigger studies and studies reproduced, but hey, this is a pretty good start. And yeah, zooming out, I think that this does add to the argument that Game Changers made talking about increased athletic performance. Now in the movie, they talked to several athletes who claimed at least that they had increased recovery and other benefits as well. And now we've seen football teams eating plant-based meals and saying, hey, this is making me feel better. And then of course we had that hilarious little section in there where they gave people either a plant-based or animal-based meal and then they measured their nightly erections, which were massively increased massively increased, you know, after the plant-based meals in the same exact people. You know, so perhaps we also have a artery function aspect here, the artery dilation increased, flow mediated dilation, on and on. And then we can contrast that to the people saying, hey, you know, I've had to quit a carnivore diet, for example, because their athletic performance was suffering, you know, their testosterone was going down, etc. You can watch all of that in my no longer carnivore video response video. But yeah, in the end, we have compelling evidence that after a intense workout, a couple days later, vegans through objective measurements of you know, pressure on muscles have less soreness across several muscle groups than people that eat meat. In addition, they've got that better grip strength, 
a couple days later, which is really interesting. Again, the vegans literally being stronger, which is funny to me. And I think this is all just so relevant in a world where people are every year trying to make New Year's resolutions to start exercising and then 90% of them failing and this could contribute to that. First Monday of the year and then a couple days later they feel like complete crap, they're super sore. You know, their muscles literally aren't working as well. Well, in this case, the vegan group was less sore, which completely blows my mind. It makes my head sore thinking about it too much. <laughs> anyway, if you would like to try Seeds DS01 Daily Symbiotic, you can of course just click the link below and use the code MIKE25 for 25% off that first month supply. And let me know down below what you thought about this study, if there was anything in there I missed or any ideas for the mechanism here as well. This is new information, so new ideas are welcome as always. All right, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.